Hey, it's Norm from Tested.com, and this is unbelievable. I'm in Switzerland right now at CERN. You might have heard of this. This is where they have and built the LHC, the Large Hadron Collider. And I'm here with two engineers who work on the Atlas experiment, Raphael and Michelle. And I just want to learn as much as I can about what you do here and how this works. So behind us is this incredible structure. It's massive. This is Atlas, the Atlas experiment. Can you explain to people what, what that is and how that differs from the LHC in general? Okay, so the, the LHC is a, an accelerator and here we are at a detector. So the, the accelerator is accelerating particles and here they collide in the center of the detector and this detector detects the particles during the collision and it detects new particles. So the difference is that there's an accelerating part and here detect detecting uh, equipment. So in, in Switzerland and in other countries, there's a tunnel, a circular tunnel, that's the biggest in the world as a particle accelerator. And that is where particles spin around at near light speed as fast as you can get them. And they collide in these machines, which you, it's called a detector. And there are only about four of these around the, the LHC. Uh, Atlas is one of the biggest ones? By the size, yes, Atlas is the biggest one. Uh, there is another experiment with the CMS, which can really compare compare the the kind of detectors, uh, the purpose of the detection, general purpose. Yeah, detector. and then and then there is two other experiments, ALICE and LHTB, uh, which are more dedicated uh, field of research. How does this detector work? You have the central point, which is particle colliding there, which we call uh, IP, and then. Uh, you have a kind of um, cylindrical shape of detectors um, that made for the smaller one. The smaller one is made to detect tracks. And then you have the calorimeters all around. The calorimeter detects more the energy of the particles. And after that, you have uh, muon chambers that are also a kind of tracking. Uh, and depending on the particles, depending on the detectors, we need or we don't need to have a magnetic field around. So there is also a very, very huge magnet uh, that uh, allow to, uh, to deviate the particles and it's a way also to identify them. So the magnets that you're talking about are, to give us a sense of scale, they are this entire, the, the, the size of this room. And you said there are a calorimeter to take energy. You're basically detecting when the particles collide, the, the energy and the momentum, and you use a magnet to curve those particles, have yeah, exactly. them bounce off different points, and so you see how fast they're moving and how they, how they reacted after colliding. Yeah, exactly. Wow, and that's it, that's simple, so simple. Um, this was a project that took decades, 20 years to build. How, how could you plan 20 years ago for the technology you would have now? How did that design process happen? Two things. First, it takes very long, as you say, to study it. And then, finally, it's long, but not so long to manufacture it. Yeah. And one of the big challenge that people who design this uh, are doing, are performing, is that finally, nearly at the last moment, they are able to say, okay, we keep our plan, but we just go to the uh, last technology. For instance, it's, for instance, for the mechanics, it's not so true because mechanics is more stable in time. Sure. But for the electronics, it's really, really true. Uh, people have developed uh, electronic boards and so on, but they are really um, willing to, to change one component if really the technology has changed in the last uh, five, six years. Um, then the effort of construction, really construction, has started something like in the 96, 97, and has been installed beginning of 2004. So you see, uh, then it's, it's a scale of less than 10 years. Right. Uh, the, the 10 previous years was just all the study to be able to, to, to achieve such equipment. The, the first 10 years, and I heard a story that, for example, there's so much information that's happening with the particles. There are almost a billion collisions happening at once. You didn't know if you had the infrastructure, the electronics and computing infrastructure to process that until more recently, and, and now we do have the computers, and it's worked out that you, you know, we can have a data byte or a petabyte per, per second of information coming out. In the next year, we are going to, to replace part of the central part with the upgraded technology. So uh, it's, uh, it's a detector which is living. living. I mean, uh, it's, 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 you don't build it and that's it. You, as new technologies come, you improve yeah, it. We, and we can change part of the detectors. 
And, and so that's what's happening right now because the LHC is, is off for consolidation, for maintenance for two years. And you actually have the Atlas experiment opening up. You can go inside and perform maintenance in there, right? Yeah, this is what we have done this year. We, we opened completely the detector in order to extract the central part of the, of the pixel. So it's really the, the detector which is around the interaction point in order to refurbish it and to, to improve with the uh, new layers of detector with new technology. How many people are working on this at one time and, and keeping it maintained? And I mean, when, when it's running, there's nobody in the cavern. No one can be in here? No, no, nobody is there. So when we are opening to do the maintenance, then around 50 person working to open the detector. But then during the run, there's a lot of people who are in the control room, right. controlling each detector and the, the way it's functioning. And in the control room, it's about 20 person working full time, 24 hours per day. And when will this be turned on again? Uh, in principle, the time schedule now is that by the end of uh, 2014, we will close everything back to what we call the run position. And beginning of 2015, the, the collider will start again. Have there been any surprises in running this, in engineering this machine? The main surprise we had in the past was that finally it started very well. On the, this kind of construction is, is made by very, very big uh, international collaboration with people working all around the world, of course, in many, many labs, many institutes. And uh, it's not obvious, finally, that we say, OK, when we will join everything, uh, it will fit and works well. And um, for a so huge experiment, the, the, the startup, the first, the first years, were uh, really, uh, really amazing because it was very, very well prepared at all levels, not only engineers, but and, uh, and it starts very smoothly. And this, uh, even if you compare with other experiments, not specifically on the LHC, but what we did in the past, it was not so obvious. Because there was really a, a scale factor between the, the LEP measurement, the previous collider, and the LHC. And it is, it's, really, it's really much more big now. I want to, to mention also that the, the challenge uh, in Atlas was the fact that we built the detector here in a cavern and not upstairs and as completely assembled upstairs and brought down. So each pieces have been brought through the, the shaft and brought down with a crane. Uh, so some of the detector were done uh, part by part and assembled here. And the, during the construction phase, the challenge was to, to, to be able to bring all the pieces with the limiting factor, which is the crane. We have right. two cranes, two pit to bring all the pieces. So 100 meters underground, yeah. basically, lowering these yeah. massive components and complicated. Yeah. So the, during the construction phase, I mean, the, the crane activity was very, very dense, and we had to, to, to match all the activities uh, to, to be able to bring all the pieces here in the cavern, wow. to be able to assemble that. Wow. And, and, and the collisions happen maybe 200 feet from us right there. That's, that's incredible. The heaviest part we have been lowered with the crane it was 250 tons. The heaviest part, 250 yeah. tons. But you can see with some orange band, yeah. this is a part of the magnet, yes. a toroidal magnet. One coil like this is 100 tons, but it's 25 meters long and 5 meters wide. That incredibly dense. And, and very, very large. Yeah. And we have to pass that along this 100 meter deep to talk about using a crane, using a crane, and that's it was really not not very very easy. <laughs> as, a, as a feat of engineering, just the assembly, not not even considering the design, all the years of design that happened. Well, I want to thank you both, Rafael and Michel, for just giving me a, a little bit of glimpse of what happens in maintaining and constructing this incredible experiment. It's one of the biggest machines, complicated, most complicated machines in the world, and and you guys are going in and and tuning it up. I mean, it's it's a little more complicated than fixing a car, for example. Well, we'll have more from Switzerland, from CERN, and the Atlas experiment on test.com. This is an incredible, incredible opportunity. I want to thank you both again, and we'll see you guys later. Right. It's an emergency front button. Uh-oh.